morning students uh, this is the second lecture in uh, phonetics and phonology for the second year students uh, still my hopes and prayers with you and your families in this you know hard time in these hard circumstances so uh, we have to continue on uh, uploading videos related to your subject or this course of year uh, in phonetics and phonology uh, so we have the second part of uh, chapter 4 which is related to um, uh, voicing and consonants uh, in the second part we are going to discuss uh, respiration and uh, voicing uh, we uh, still use the same textbook uh, which I recommend for you it's better to use the original textbook which is English Phonetics and Phonology by Peter Roche uh, actually studying using the textbook is far more better than any other resources like handouts or something like that it's better to study in the book uh, it provides you with accurate information about the material uh, and you know that uh, it's uh, free of any errors that anyone might do when they are rewriting or trying to uh, reduce the information so uh, we discuss uh, respiration and voicing uh, in this section we try to understand how the voicing is made but it is uh, also discussing respiration the normal way that we breathe in and breathe out it's the same way we produce the sound and uh, we produce speech sounds by uh, what's called aggressive pulmonic airstream aggressive pulmonic airstream this is this uh, aggressive pulmonic airstream simply when the air comes from the lungs uh, towards the mouth or the uh, nose it's called aggressive pulmonic airstream so it's simply the movement of the air from inside the lungs out and this airstream when it is um, exhaled so we are we are inhaling where we are sucking the air towards uh, inside our lungs and we exhale when we try to push the air outside our bodies so aggressive pulmonic airstream is actually when you um, exhale when you uh, try to push the air from uh, your lungs out the air actually uh, moves by uh, the movement of the muscles in the rib cage so the rib cage actually pushes the lungs or tries to squeeze the the lungs when the rib cage and uh, the ribs actually they the try to squeeze the air the air will come out and the result will be what is called aggressive pulmonic air stream well when the air is you know pushing out from the lungs it will face certain obstructions or here in this textbook is called structures these structures will result in the speech sounds that we use in language so these structures or let's call them also uh, abstractions they result the result is the sound the sounds or the speech sounds that we use in speaking well the uh, first thing that the air comes across 
or the first structure is voicing or phonation in the previous lecture we discussed the four positions of the larynx uh, when we discussed these four positions one of them was related to the voicing when the air is um, squeezed between the vocal folds it will create voicing so this voicing well is the first structure is the first obstacle that comes across the airstream so this will result into some kind of a pressure under the larynx because you know the air is not going freely it's a bit squeezed or it's under pressure because it's not a free path so this will result in what's called subglottal pressure actually we can control this subglottal pressure so there are three ways in which we can control the subglottal pressure you see that the first one is intensity we can control the intensity of our voicing so if we shout if we uh, try to raise our voices we actually increase the pressure under the um, the larynx or what's called subglottal so when it's the difference between speaking quietly when you are speaking quietly and when you are uh, shouting so the intensity with high intensity when you are shouting and with uh, low intensity when you are speaking uh, quietly uh, the second way we can control the subglottal pressure is frequency so you can raise and you can lower you the frequency of your voice we can control also the frequency of the um, subglottal pressure or the frequency of voicing uh, by uh, when the vocal cords are vibrating rapidly so how many times per second like the the vocal cords can uh, vibrate so voicing is at a high frequency where you can make it in high frequency when um, you are your voice is so sharp like the women's voice is a bit sharper than the men's voice that's because it has a high frequency and also when you are making fewer vibrations per second it's like when ha it happens when men are speaking so their uh, voice is like a big um, uh, not sharp but you can say it's uh, the, the volume is a bit you know harder the third way in which we can control the subglottal pressure is variation in, in quality so the quality of voicing is related to how we can prolong or shorten our vocal cords so this will result in what harsh breathy murmured or uh, a creaky sounds so in summary to this lecture we can say that we have discussed uh, the aggressive pulmonic airstream i told you it's the normal way of breathing when you breathe out uh, during this process you can produce the uh, voices or the sounds or speech sounds the second topic or the second important topic we discussed is the structures here or the obstacles that face the air when it comes out these obstacles actually the uh, they create the sounds or the voice the first obstacle is voicing and phonation voicing and phonation uh, which is uh, creates voiced 
uh, sounds or to be specific in English language we create voiced consonants so the third important topic that we discussed is subglottal pressure which is the pressure that is created behind the larynx when we uh, squeeze the air behind the larynx we, we don't let it go it will create a pressure under the larynx we can control how the air comes through the vocal cords we can control the intensity when you are shouting you are using high intensity when you are speaking slowly you are using low intensity frequency is also can be you know can be controlled especially like in, in women it has a high frequency and in men it has a low frequency the quality of the subglottal also it's related to um, the long or, or the length of the vocal folds so you can actually imitate many sounds by changing the way uh, in which the vocal folds are shaped uh, so it's more like a musical instrument so you can control it you can uh, change it the way you like I try to keep the lectures as short as possible uh, you know it's easy to upload them and it's also easy for the students to understand them uh, instead of making a very long uh, lecture so uh, this is the end of my second lecture I hope that this lecture will be of some value to you uh, and most importantly my thoughts and prayers are uh, for everybody in our country and all over the world in these hard circumstances so thank you very much for listening